Hello, Irish fans, and welcome to another edition of Dome and Domer. My name is Mike Brammer, joining me from the friendly confines of Las Vegas Strip. My coffee, that's a pretty cool view back there. It is. Especially, that, especially I do especially like the mountains. It. Yeah, that is cool. I, 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 I would give a plug to the Alara if they were paying me to do so, but of course they're not. So. <laughs> but then again, I just did. So Yeah, at least they got you a pretty decent view on the room. Oh, absolutely. That's, well, I think that's how they build hotels here. I mean, they want yeah. all rooms to have fantastic views, but at the same time, they don't want you spending a lot of time in your room. So, yeah. Well, you know, really quick, when I texted you yesterday, I didn't realize you were on the plane and you didn't respond for a while. And then I see a news report that there was a stabbing on the street. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, they oh, crap. Right. The, the, the Coffee right. must have lipped off to some BYU fan. <laughs> <laughs> what me antagonize people? No, that never ever happens. Uh, no, I, I guess uh, there was a guy who uh, was up by the win. Uh, a guy wanted to get a picture with some showgirls that were on. I mean, they, they have some people on the strip that you can take pictures with and stuff. And he, yeah, claimed right. he was a chef and he wanted to get a picture with his knife. And they said, heck no. And he completely flipped out and just started shanking folks and I guess two people died. It was, it was really, Isn't really that awful. That's just unbelievable. No, that, yeah. that happened probably about an hour before I landed. Yeah. I was, that's, I was, that's, that's, I was in yeah. Dallas for part of the week with my, uh, with my ND roommate. Uh, and then uh, I flew in here. So yeah. kudos to Southwest airlines who also are not paying me to say anything. So yeah, there you go. All right. There you go. All right. Well, let's, let's get into it. So I think a very big, huge question off the top is, uh, is this this kind of feels like a make or break game for Notre Dame for the football season? Would you agree? No, I do. I think this is well. Th this is really the last chance to make a splash before Clemson. I mean, I know Syracuse may somehow sneak in. I think Syracuse may have snuck into the rankings. And yeah, stuff. they're twenty third now. Yeah, but I don't know. I I think this is a chance on national television at night to really make an impression on the voters, make an impression on the powers that be. If Notre Dame has any chance of the New York six or the New York six bowls, I mean they're gonna have to win out. That has to start tonight. I mean you lose tonight, it's gonna be like the the pinstripe bowl or something like that at best. But I think if if they really want people to wash the taste of Marshall out of their mouths, this it, tomorrow night is a must win. They, they yeah. need to put the same kind of offensive showing they did against North Carolina and uh, both on the offense and the defensive side. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things that's got me a little bit concerned, and I, I've just noticed this, and not, this isn't just Notre Dame, but I think it's college football in general. The game has really changed quite a bit because of the NIL and all of the distractions that come with that and how much more – effort it now takes to recruit top talent. I mean, we saw Marcus Freeman at a high school football game during the week of practice. So, yeah. I mean, it was their off week, but, um, you know, back in the day, that was kind of unheard of, you know. I mean, that's not something a head coach normally does during the season. It goes and travels to see some high school prospect. I mean, I'm, if it was local, I think they do it, but that's not fair. That wasn't all that close. But anyways, I you know, I, I think to an extent it does slash did happen. I mean, I, I think there, there are examples of like in season games that, especially like around the bye week, because you figure Friday is not a lot of practice and Saturday and stuff like that. So it does give them the opportunity to get there. I think what's changed definitely is the willingness of uh, donors to contribute uh personalized transportation and stuff like that. I mean, I, there's no doubt in my mind. I, mean, I don't think Marcus Freeman was flying Southwest Airlines out to see people. I mean, <laughs> someone uh, yeah. may offered him a probably use of a private jet or something like that. And yep. Yep. this this is something that uh, Brian Kelly complained about. Uh, we, we don't have private jets to help with recruiting and stuff like that. Yeah. And it was also yeah. always one of those things that drove the people on my site crazy because the word on Brian Kelly was he always didn't he didn't put a lot of effort into recruit, or at least not the effort he should have. I mean, that's one yeah. of the biggest differences we've seen with Marcus Freeman. This guy yeah. knows that's where the rubber meets the road and that that's where he has to really make an effort. And he is doing so, which is fantastic. Yeah. So if he had someone uh, donate a, a, a useful plane for him, I have absolutely no problem with that because he's 
he's really putting the elbow grease in there. So if somebody wants oh, to Oh, he help definitely him, is, yeah. I mean, it's no paying problem. off. You can tell. you got to mm-hmm. give him credit for what he's doing. I mean, Absolutely. he's got his challenges with keeping everybody, and so I think that's why he was there. Um, but, oh, absolutely. I mean, we'll see. We're still two months away, so we'll see absolutely. what happens. But it, at the moment, it looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, back to BYU, I, I do find – I think you're right. I mean, I find this interesting because they're very similar to North Carolina, only a lot better defense. Not, not terribly better in terms of – you know, you look at the number of yards they're giving up rushing the football, and they're averaging 152 a game. Mm-hmm. So that that bodes well for us. Um, but they got a quarterback that's probably, arguably, every bit as good. Um, 24 years old, which is what you find on BYU. You got a you got a much more mature football team because of their two year mission that all these guys do. Sure. So 24 year old who's in his second season, but. 12 TDs, one interception. Um, this is a guy that can throw the ball around. At 70% completion his last two games. And, um, you know, I think that's where the challenge is going to be. This is going to be, I, I agree with you, I think the offense is going to have to show up and put 30 points on the board. Mm-hmm. But more likely the defense is going to have to corral these guys and not allow them to fling it around. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you, you make an outstanding point where, like, Maturity is what you get when you face BYU. I mean, because they have players that do the missions and then come back. Which, which again, I'm. Let's be clear. I'm not complaining about. I'm not screaming under advantage or anything like that. No, that's that's just part of how their institution works, which is which is great. Uh, but even if they may not have like the four stars and the five stars and things like that, you have you the, uh, nothing succeeds like experience. So I think. Having these guys who have been through the been through a lot with with college football, having the age the maturity, kind of a kind of different from a sophomore quarterback who is uh, now making yeah, a second twenty one or twenty these days, you know, because yeah, guys are coming out early. So yeah, I, I just think that that's going to be a challenge for us, and I think um, just with all the distractions and everything, it just puts all the more pressure on us to show up in that first quarter. And, and execute on a game plan that we think has got a lot of potential to to win in terms of and, and you know you know UNC is UNC now they turned around and pounded Virginia Tech not that Virginia Tech's any good but you know you got to give credit for Carolina bouncing back after losing to us no um, doubt. but you know I do think that this is a game where you're going to see where we're at as a program for this for this yeah. year. Not as a program as a whole, but just for this team, for this season, because you're right. If they can come out of this with a win, and I mean a win, just you don't need to be terribly impressed. You just got to win this football game. You lose this and the wheels are going to come off and you're right. I mean, we're going to be seven and five. Well, and I, I, don't know if the, I don't know if the wheels come off. I mean, it so much depends on on the nuances of it. I mean, if they come out, if, if the offense... Yeah. Could I would agree to that. play yeah. well, and we lose like on one or two big plays or something, or a ball bounces the wrong way. Well, that's that's annoying, but at least it kind of shows progress because progress is what's most important. I mean, we saw uh, a good game plan against Ohio State it was terrible against Marshall, but then Cal was good, North Carolina was better. Let's see if the trend line continues up. I think a, a win is crucial for postseason. I think it would help with recruiting and all those other things. Yeah. But yeah. even so, so, like it's almost like 1B because 1A has to be is a consistency there. Because I mean, you, you remember the Jerry Faust years as well as I do. And I'm not trying to compare uh, Faust with Freeman. I mean, Freeman certainly has certainly has his act together a lot more and stuff like that. But one of the hallmarks of those teams was inconsistency. They would go out, they'd be yeah. world beaters one week and then look like garbage the next week against a much inferior opponent. So if we can see the trend line to continue up, if the offensive execution is still there, if the defense, the defense has actually been playing very well all season. And yeah, re- relatively speaking, it's been relatively unheralded because, you know, they, they go out and I think twice in a row we've had, uh, players or or we've had um offensive players on the other team who have had pedestrian performances against Notre Dame but then they turn around and it's lights out uh the next week I mean the the, the running back from Cal had like 250 yards the next week uh Drake May had a great game against Virginia Tech now granted as you said those opponents aren't necessarily all that great 
but they will, you know, it's there, there's something to be said for that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I so on everybody's pointing to the fact that they have two really tough games on their schedule and they beat Baylor. Baylor has shown that they're a decent football team this year. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't some aberration. Um, Oregon, yeah, maybe a bigger question mark, although you could you could say that Oregon just didn't show up when they got blown out earlier this season. Um, and the game was at Oregon, so. Yeah, and so um, so you got to factor that in. But I, but I do think, you know, what is kind of surprising being where you're at, Notre Dame started out at two and a half point and is now three and a half point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is a team of four and one. Ranked, was something and, you know, yeah. it's hard, hard to say sometimes. Yeah, it is. Uh, but, but you know, in, in any event, I think that there's some, after having the game that we did against North Carolina, all of a sudden people feel like we got our, our feet underneath us and things are heading in the right direction. Um, you know, with that, I'm just kind of a little bit curious. I mean, I, I my gut instinct is that we're going to come out and pound the football trying to run it to establish that right from the get-go. Um, however, having said that, it all, it all depends on what he sees in, in film because they may see some things where they've, you know, those, those first, usually those first 20 plays are scripted. Sure. It's them trying to set stuff up. And, um, and, and in any event, it'll be really interesting to see if they just come out and try and pound it physically with, you know, eight out of the first 10 plays running plays. That would not surprise me at all. And um, as you pointed out, I think uh, BYU's defense is tougher than North Carolina's was. Yeah. So I think being able to establish the run in that scenario is going to be a big help. It's there's, yeah. uh, I, I, I don't think this is a scenario where you, well, you, you want to shorten the game and stuff like that, but you know, keeping B BYU's strength seems to be its offense. So keeping them off the field is yep. a good thing, obviously. Well, yeah, and I, I, uh, um, I, this is one of those games that I think it'll be, it'll ebb and flow. I mean, the, <laughs> there could be some things that change and it'll be based on what happens inside the game. Because I do think that this is going to be a battle all the way to the fourth quarter. I mean, th there's BYU is talented. It's not like they don't have any talent. They absolutely do. They got they they've got you know their their number one receiver's been banged up. I I think he's playing against us, but he may not be fully a hundred percent. But they got other guys that have shown up, and mm -hmm. so there is some talent on this team. And and anytime you got a good quarterback like him. Anything can happen. You know, he could get hot. Yeah. He could, the game could slow down for him. He could see everything that he's wanting to see. You just never know. And um, so I, I think it's going to be a challenge. What, you know, just, I mean, there's been a ton of stuff that's happened, even though there was an off week. I mean, obviously the departure of Jacob Lacey, not, not a huge, huge surprise to me, but I, I do think, again, this is kind of where college football changes. I mean, he had a big decision to make because, he plays one more down and he's lost his red shirt year. Yeah. Um, he's got two years of eligibility left. There's a doggone good freshman class coming in of a defensive line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, honestly, they, they, they have kind of a backlog now. I think there's, yeah, you, yeah. Got, you guys got Riley and stuff like that. I mean, there he, he's, he's fighting for snaps. And I think this, it does reduce the depth a little bit. And I, I'm not trying to shortchange no. Lacey at all, but I, I think he looked at the situation and he made the decision that was best for him, which is, which yep. is all you can all you can ask yeah. for. Yeah, I just I think this is just indicative of college football now because you mm -hmm. now have this ability to kind of make these kind of decisions, and and he he's a guy that will get picked up. I mean, he's going to play somewhere. That's for doggone sure. Mm -hmm. um, but like you say, I think it's just a body thing. I mean, I think you know it'd be interesting to see the younger guys that are now going to have to step up and contribute and. Um, it, it, interesting, but I don't think it's a big deal at all. They were contributing and, already, though. I mean, it was yeah, a, they were. Yeah, they were already getting some more snaps as we were going into the season. Sure. You know, they have been have been getting some more snaps. So, um, but yeah, not, I I didn't take much of it. I, to me, that was not really much of a story, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just stuff that's going to happen now in the world that we live in. But sure. I, I do think that that for me, it, the, the thing that does kind of concern me a little bit is just. Freeman being as young as he is, it's his first year into this, and then he's thrown in at a time where college football is going through a major transition, you know, because yeah, this is all uncharted waters. How much time do you spend doing this? How much time do you spend doing that? He is the head football coach at Notre Dame. He's being pulled in 20,000 different directions, mm -hmm. 
Sure. And, and it just it's really interesting to see how well that these guys show up Saturday night. And are they right from the first snap locked in and dialed in? Because that would be a great sign. Actually, I'm, um, I'm confident that's going to happen. I mean, it happened at Ohio State. Uh, I think it happened at North Carolina. I mean, these guys were, you didn't see them coming out like lackadaisical or unfocused or something. Now, granted, that happened at Marshall, but I mean, that was the first home game. I could see maybe yep, the a lot of, of it a little right. overwhelming. Well, now, I, I don't know. I as of right now, I don't list uh, coming out unprepared on my. Uh, no, I don't think it's unprepared. I, I think it's so. yeah, I would agree with you. It's not unpreparedness so much as it's, you know, college football is all about having that repetition, right? The reason that Alabama kicks ass every single year is because they do the same damn thing every single year. And it's because yep. they got this, you know, they've got that down pat with obviously talent too deep three deep even of mm -hmm. four star guys yep. but the truth of the matter is nick saban runs a machine and they don't deviate from that and no, he's been not. successful at doing that and you know that that's what you're trying to emulate you're trying to not you know whether dabble sweeney has run into some issues with that as they they are definitely looking good i mean i've seen them play twice now He's a much better quarterback than he was last year. I mean, mm -hmm. he's he's they're they're getting that's going to be a real tough battle for us. Um, but no doubt. again, I think all that we care about is that from week to week we're seeing improvement, and and we have we had that drop off with Marshall, mm -hmm. but ever since then we've gotten better week to week, and I think this is where the offense we're going to really see where they're at at this moment. This will be a big moment for Drew Pine, mm -hmm. and um, you know. I, I feel confident. I'm not worried that we're, you know, going to show up and lay an egg. I'm not considering that at all. I just, I, what I don't hope is that it takes us a quarter and a half to get settled in and we're, you know, finally clicking. Um, because with an offense like, you know, BYU, if they get lucky a little bit here or there, that's that's the thing you don't want to see. No, absolutely. Um, but you know, with that, what what what's your prediction for the game? What are you looking at? Uh, well, I mean, looking at the schedule, like you showed, it seems like BYU can score a lot of points. But against Baylor and Oregon, they were right at the uh, twenty point mark in regulation. So I'm confident in saying I think it's going to be a, a thirty one twenty one. Notre Dame's going to win. Okay, I got. Uh, 35-24, but I think it, it'll it be close into the middle of the third quarter. I mean, it could be a one-point game. Um, but I do think we'll pull away there at the end um, is my gut instinct. You know, one of the things I wanted to do each week going forward, Coffee, is I wanted to just give your prediction on where you think we're going to end up because I think it's just going to change week to week. Certainly. Um, but, but I'm kind of curious as to what you think in terms of Notre Dame finishing the season based on what you've seen in this team so far? I can see, I can see nine and three. Yeah. Um, I, I think they'll lose one of Clemson and, or Southern Cal. Um, Stanford is, hasn't been playing well. I'm not convinced Syracuse is a genuine top 25 team. Uh, Clemson obviously is Clemson. Navy has been playing all that well. Boston College has been playing well. So it's very possible. I, I think they will lose one of Clemson and Southern Cal, but I do think they're capable of winning at least one of those games. Yeah, um, that's exactly where I'm at at the moment. I just, just based on what we've seen, mm -hmm. I, I kind of can see them coming together, here, playing well, winning. But I think it's a huge challenge, Clemson and USC, just yeah. with everything that can happen. Um, you know, I, I did see Syracuse play a little bit. I think they're good. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't, I mean, I think that would be a game where we'd have to be, you know, you always have that one game where your offense just doesn't click. You just can't mm -hmm. seem to get it together. And, um, there's always at least one of those games. You just hope like hell it doesn't happen against somebody like Syracuse. Cause <clears> I think if it happens with anybody else on the schedule outside of Clemson and USC, we probably can overcome it. Um, but just I think, with Syracuse. I, I think if we win, if we win Saturday, chances are not. And I, I don't know who Syracuse plays between now and the end of October, but it's possible that game may end up being at night, which I mean, who would have thought? Usually like ND versus Syracuse. I mean, yeah, hell, that could be 
Well, well they, got, they, got, know, they got they got NC State and Clemson, so oh. they, they could probably got two losses staring at them right now. Yeah, so. That's true. So they, yeah. they, may have, they, may, they may not be a top 25 team by the time we play. But so. you know what? If they win one of those two games, they're definitely potentially going to move that to a night game. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. If they, if, I think if Clemson beats NC State, that absolutely moves to a night game. Mm-hmm. Or if they play really tough against Clemson, um, you, you could possibly see that. But anyways, yeah, that, that, um, that'll be interesting. But that's exactly where I see us at. And I, I kind of, at the moment, look and looking like that's where we're going to end up. Mm-hmm. It just all the, all the more reason why this is such a critical game for us setting the stage for the rest of the season. And I think, yeah. um, I feel good about it. I think, I think Notre Dame is going to show up Saturday night. I agree. And, uh, and I think that more progression is going to show our way. So I'm, I'm kind of excited. It'd be nice to see if Angeli could get in somehow, at least for a couple of snaps. Yeah. yeah, that would be awesome. Get mm-hmm. him in just to get a couple snaps, get some game, game feel. And uh, that way he's not coming off the bench with, you know, Pine getting the wind knocked out of him or something like that. And it's, yeah. and it's a critical situation as his first snap. Sure. Yep. All right, great. We'll leave it there. You've been listening to Doma Domer, an online conversation about Notre Dame sports from a fan's perspective. For Mike Coffee out in Vegas, I'm Mike Brammer. Thanks for listening. <laughs>